you've decided you wanna buy your first cinema camera. You start doing your research and there's just so many options to pick from. Maybe you're a recent graduate or a photographer, so you're not looking to invest like a ton of money yet, but you want something that's a good tool that's gonna last you a number of years and allow you to create the work that's gonna get you more work. Well, I'm here to tell you that what you really should look into is a camera that probably isn't even on your radar. I'm about to show you two separate images. One is captured on the most used camera in Hollywood. The other, the camera that I've been using personally for the last three years, and I've shot over 10 films on it. The Canon C200 has an amazing image. And after six years, four price drops, the camera now sits in a place that is totally affordable for aspiring filmmakers, which leads me to my first point. There are two prices for the Canon C200. For $2,500, you get the brain, just the body itself and nothing else. For an extra thousand, you get a grip, a top handle, and most importantly, you get the monitor. The main reason one would spend the extra thousand dollars is really for the monitor. It's gonna be a dedicated video feed, which doesn't include the SDI port. So you're gonna be able to have a dedicated monitor just for camera, and then you can run HDMI or SDI out additionally. Whereas if you buy just the brain only, you are sacrificing one of those ports, which can make things complicated down the road. If you're running a small crew and you don't have many people on set and you don't wanna spend a lot of money, just buy the brain. You're gonna get the same great image, all the same features, but you probably can't send your feed as easily to another monitor. Neutral density filters are light cut filters, which allow you to keep your exposure correct. Basically, it cuts the light in various stops and allows you to keep your exposure perfect while maintaining the proper settings for shooting video. A fantastic feature that the C200 has and is one of the areas that it excels over many other cameras in its same price point, as most mirrorless cameras do not have this feature. Next up, and probably the most debatable feature of this camera is autofocus. The reason I say debatable is because for a lot of intermediate or advanced cinematographers, most of them do not use autofocus at all. As a new cinematographer, having autofocus is going to really up your game in terms of the types of shots that you're gonna be able to do. The RAW codec is wonderful per usual. It has fantastic dynamic range and the ability to decide what log profile you want to use in post is a great, great asset. With the Canon C200, a lot of the time, C-Log3 is usually what you wanna shoot as C-Log2 can get fairly noisy, but the ability to decide later which one you wanna use. It allows you to get the best image from different scenes with different lighting situations. Sometimes when you're in lower light, shooting in C-Log3 is much better because you get a much cleaner image despite losing a little bit of dynamic range. It can really help with the grading process. The Canon C200 next to the Alexa, while there are some minor differences, nearly indistinguishable. For the untrained eye, the cameras look almost the same side by side, and that is a lot to be said considering the Alexa is a $50,000 camera. I am well aware that the Alexa has better highlight roll off and for the most part, straight out of camera has nicer colors, but the price difference is very vast. It's an unrealistic comparison to say that they are in the same bracket. For $2,500, you can get a camera that looks nearly identical with very little work done in post. For somebody who's just starting as a cinematographer or a filmmaker who's also gonna be coloring their own work, this is a really, really, really great thing to have. The body design of the Canon C200 is probably one of the features that in my book sets it apart from every single mirrorless camera. This is probably the feature that separates it from the competition because there's a button for ISO, there's a button for shutter angle, there's a button for white balance, there's a button for your ND filters, there's a button for basically every single setting that you would want to change on the fly. Having it all on the smart side of the camera just really allows for a pleasing shooting experience. Another aspect of the body design is its fan. This is one of those things that for many years, the Canon C200 really separated itself from the competition, but in recent years, a lot of mirrorless cameras have actually had built-in fans, which is great. 
I've run it in like 95 degree weather for hours and hours and hours, and the camera gets just subtly warm to the touch, but never truly gets hot. The last feature of the body design, which I love, is the SDI port. Now, this is again, one of those things where once you have it, you're like, damn, I never wanna go back to using HDMI. The connection speed on SDI is way faster. It's a much more secure port, and it allows you to send a feed to a lot more professional monitoring systems with very low latency. The C200 is a little bit of a weird one because it only has one SDI port and you can't use the HDMI port and the SDI port at the same time, which is a little disappointing, but you can run the SDI to your monitor and then an SDI out of your monitor to either a wireless transmitter or to a wired monitor. Another feature of the Canon C200 is the built-in XLR ports. This is something that a lot of cameras don't have with the caveat of a few exceptions, but the main attraction to this feature is that it has really good preamps. Like you can run audio straight into this camera and it sounds fantastic. It is a really wonderful feature to have, especially for running gun filmmaking when you don't have time to have a sound person. You can just plug a mic straight into the camera and get great audio straight into your file. You don't even need to sync anything up in post. And the person manning the camera can monitor audio themselves, which usually is typical with smaller crews. When it comes to media, the Canon C200 takes CFast 2.0 cards, which have come down in price quite a bit in recent years, making them a lot more affordable than CF Express Type A and B, which are generally more expensive and usually have less storage than CFast 2.0 cards for the same amount of money. The battery life on the C200 is amazing. One battery gets you two and a half to three and a half hours of runtime per battery. They sell a BP30 and a BP60. I personally just use the BP30s because it's flush with the camera, but you can get a lot more runtime with a BP60. Batteries are about 250 bucks per battery, which feels pretty pricey, but considering that you get the same runtime from a V mount or a gold mount, typically, the fact that you can have such a low profile with the camera is extremely attractive. The Canon C200 comes in two separate mounts. You can get it in EF or PL. However, Canon no longer sells the PL mount brand new and it must be purchased through eBay or like a used buyer situation. With that said, the EF mount's kind of a mixed bag because on one hand, there's so many EF lenses and EF lenses are way cheaper now. You can get them for next to nothing used. And that's one of the main reasons that I think the Canon C200, a whole package is attractive. You buy the camera, it's come down in price a lot. And then when you go to buy lenses, you can get like an entire 35, 50, 85 for under a thousand dollars used. In the grand scheme of what lenses are out there, we're not really in the realm of PL lenses because this camera's price point really isn't designed for people who are renting PL lenses, I think. If you wanted to do that, you'd probably also rent an entirely different camera body as well. The Canon C200 has a Super 35 sized sensor and can shoot up to 4K DCI in 12-bit RAW and in 8-bit. It can shoot in 24p, 23.97, 29.97, and in 60p as well, but when you go to 60p, it drops to 10-bit video instead of 12-bit. However, it still shoots RAW in 60p. I'll talk about the weight and size of the camera. I would say it's a medium sized camera, but it's a medium sized camera that's fairly light, especially if you don't rig it out with a cage and everything. It feels really good in the hands and has a very robust feel, yet isn't dense. Like it doesn't feel like you're picking up a brick. It's much more lightweight and feels more just like sturdy. The size of the camera definitely helps with like shake. You don't get as much micro jitters comparably to a mirrorless camera. And when you show up to set, people look at the camera and think it looks like a professional camera. This camera straight out of the box is going to say, oh, this is like a video dedicated camera. It's not something that you're converting to making it a cinema camera. The size of it is also fantastic because it fits on most gimbals. If you just run the camera body and a small lens, you can actually put the C200 on an RS2, RS3, most of the Zion gimbals, and you can run around using the autofocus and get some really amazing shots. I know you can put most mirrorless cameras on gimbals, but you can't say that about most larger cinema cameras. So it's definitely in the ballpark of a run and gun rig. 
I can't tell you how many times people have watched films that I've made and asked me if it was shot on RED or shot on Airy. I'm always excited to tell them, no, it's actually C200, it's the cheaper camera. I feel like that says a lot about the image that it produces, but it also reminds me I don't need to spend a ton of money to get a really wonderful image. I'm growing to a place where I might be using bigger cameras now, but for the first three years of my career, I've always felt like I had the best tool for the job. It's not to say that that's the best tool for everybody, but it has worked really, really, really well for me. All right, that wraps it up. Subscribe to see more videos like this. My partner Katie and I have been working on a ton of different content that we plan to release. And until then, I'll see you later.